Here's a quick video on filling in each page of the thermos packet. Uh, after yesterday, I took a picture of everyone's mass data that had finished massing their completed thermoses, and so these are the masses I got from the teams yesterday. I'll also have these on the whiteboard at the front of the room, and so if your team is not listed in this picture, then you can add your data to the whiteboard at the front of the room and update your thermos packet page for masses of the containers. After yesterday, these were the teams that had finished calculating their change in temperature, and so you can add this data to your packet, and if any teams are finished calculating their change in temperature, they can add their data to the whiteboard at the front of the room so that you can fill in as many teams as possible in this chart. So now that you've tested your thermos at least one time, how do you calculate your change in temperature and how do you fill in the data table on this page? So first, in order to calculate change in temperature, it is always the formula of the beginning temperature we're going to use, uh, the temperature your thermos started at minus the temperature your thermos finished at just to keep the numbers positive because we want the absolute value of the change from the beginning to the end of the 10 minutes and the unit will be degrees Celsius. In order to calculate the insulating value of your container, you're going to calculate the joules or the Q of your container. So we're using that famous equation Q equals MC delta T. You figured out your delta T from up above we're using water in your container, so you always know the specific heat of water is 4.18. The delta T is the number you got from up here as your answer. And the mass should be 250 because most of you use 250 grams of water in your container. If you use some other volume, then you should put that volume as the mass of the water in this equation. Once you've calculated your Q, that represents your joules that your water lost and so to fill in the data table in the very last box you would take your number of joules and divide by the 10 minutes of time and that will get you the unit joules per minute and then you can fill in your delta t from number two and the mass of your container from your data table along with your group number put your mass of your container and the delta T of your container from your best test on the board behind the sub at the front of the room so that other teams can use your data to plot the bar graphs coming next. You wanna see if you did two tests of your thermos, you wanna see which test was the best heat capacity. So you're going to be plotting at least one data set of your temperatures on this graph. If you did two tests of temperature, you'll be plotting two sets of data, so you'll have two lines on this graph. You should set up your x-axis in time, and you can skip every other line because we counted in half minutes, so you want zero, half, minute, half, two, half, and so on, up to 10. The y-axis should be the highest temperature that your water reached, and then you'll just plot your two sets of data over the 10 minutes, and there will be rulers, and you can connect the dots. You do not need a line of best fit because a best fit line assumes that you're testing different variables at each time point, but you are testing the same variable at each time point, so you can connect your dots. And if you tested your thermos twice, then you'll have two sets of dots, and so you can use two different colors or two different symbols. So for filling in page 8 and page 9, you're going to make a bar chart, and you need to choose two colors of pen. One color for your team, and one color for everybody else's team. You're going to try to rank yourself. Now for mass, you want to be the lightest mass. You want to have the lowest bar. So across the bottom, we're going to put the team numbers that have reported in, and each team gets their own bar. So you might have to make one number for one square. On the y-axis, you're going to rank by mass from 0 to 400. 
So let's say that team one made it to 200 grams, you'd give them a bar reaching up to 200. And then team two, you'd fill them in. Team three, you'd fill them in. Working your way all the way to your team. So you can see by this example, my team in my fake data was the heaviest mass. So out of eight teams, my rank would be eight. I'm eight out of eight. You want to try and be number one or number two. Page 9 is exactly the same as page 8, except that you might want to spread your degrees Celsius on the y-axis out as far as they will go. And keep working until the end. The packet is due by the end of class on Friday, and I will pick them up after I get back and announce the winners uh, next week. If your team did not have data to report in, that's fine. You can still do every page that we've talked about except for the degrees Celsius page where you rank your own container loss of temperature over time, but you can still earn almost all of the points for this packet if you complete all the other pages except for the ones pertaining to your pack, your thermos. Good luck, have a good weekend.